I know that it's been a long day for uh, folks going to the nursing home and while they run. Just want to look at the Word of God and see what the Lord will speak to us. Amen. Gather right around the altar, spend some time praying. Amen. And just leave. Amen. With a fresh renewal from the Holy Ghost. Ah, praise God. Amen. Exodus chapter number 14. Exodus chapter number 14. We ever get to the place where we feel like we have accomplished, we have uh, pinnacled, we have uh, exhausted all that we can do. Amen. When we've done all that we can do, um, let's just see what happens to the children of Israel as they are making their way out of Egypt and God has so uh, amazingly moved for them and uh, they're in the wilderness. And uh, verse number 14 um, of, of Exodus, verse 14, jumping back to verse 13 actually, the Bible says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Amen. Here are the children of Israel. And we know the story where the mountains are at the side, and the Red Sea is in front of them, and they look, and there is Pharaoh, and all of his armies, and they are looking to leave. Here is God's people who has been crying out for deliverance. Here is God's people who have been faithful in doing what God has required of them. And there they were. They applied the blood to the doorpost. We know that they were ready. Uh, their bags packed. And they begin to move at the command of God's man. And uh, here we find that, uh, that it seems like it is an impossible situation. They have done everything that they need to do. How about us tonight? There are situations in our life where we have done all that we know to do. Uh, whatever the case may be for you individually, you've done everything that you know to do. And Moses says that the Lord shall fight your battle and ye shall hold your peace. What a great position to be in. Amen. Moses said that the Lord will fight your battle and you shall hold your peace. I read it, uh, uh, this week, and uh, one writer said it this way. He said, when you find that you're at the end of your rope, you will find that you are at the hem of His garment. Amen. When we've done all that we know that we can do. Amen. Being at the hem of Jesus' garment. And uh, the Word of God is very specific that when we have done all that we can do, we need to leave the rest up to God. Amen. Sometimes we are a little too dependent upon our own abilities instead of uh, relying upon God to do what He can do and wants to do. Amen. When we see things happening, we fail to wait upon the Lord. Now, I just want to say this to you tonight. Wait upon the Lord. When you've done all that you can do, wait upon the Lord. I believe that God wants us to know as a church that God is about to move and God is moving. God is doing great things. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, the Word of God says Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. I'm going to read several verses tonight. It's really going to be the crux of the message. And Isaiah says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. If God speaks it tonight, God will bring it to pass. I want to encourage you as believers this evening, what are the promises of God's Word that you're holding on to? What are the things that God's spoken to you in prayer? What are those words that's prophetically been given to you? If God has spoken, amen, it will come to pass. Amen. God keeps His Word. 
The book of Isaiah 55 verse 12 and 13 says, For ye shall go out with joy and be led with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands, instead of the thorn shall come up uh, the uh, up the fir, instead of the briar shall come up uh, the myrtle tree, and it shall be uh, to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. I'm glad for the presence of God. I'm thankful for the word of the Lord. Amen. We can receive it and we can live in it. Amen. Sometimes we just have to wait for the Lord to do the work. Mm -hmm. Just waiting, God. You do the work. I've done all that I know to do. And, 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 and Moses said, now stand still and see the salvation of God. Daniel, sometimes you're going to be at school and you're going to know that God spoke to your heart. And everyone else around is going to be living wicked. But you just stand firm in the promises of God and He will fight the battle. He will bring your salvation. Amen. The battle is not ours, but it's His. Amen. David said this, Psalms 27, verse 13 and 14. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. I believe God is going to do something in the church. Amen. I think we just need to wait on the Lord. And I believe that even as we wait, we might as well start rejoicing because we know that the battle is not ours. Amen. It is the Lord's. Notice what, what God spoke to Joshua. He said, There shall not be any man as to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, I shall be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Amen. I'm glad that God is with us. Amen. Just as He's been with saints in days gone by, He's with us. Amen. The Word of God says that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned, and uh, the heritage of the servants of the Lord, uh, that is theirs. Amen. It is the righteousness of the Lord to us. In Deuteronomy 1.30, the Word of God says, The Lord your God which goeth before you, He shall fight for you according to all that He did for you in Egypt before your eyes. My question to you tonight, if God is for us, who can be against us? Sometimes we worry about things that will never happen. Sometimes we try to fix things that aren't even broken. Sometimes we try to control instead of trusting God. We just need to stand still and see God move. Just stand still and see God move. That's a tough responsibility sometimes. Because by nature, we're fixers. We're doers. We have lots of resources at our fingertips. But God said to stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. You know the desire He's placed upon your heart that hasn't come to fulfillment? Wait on the Lord. Do you know the prayer that you've prayed and you know nothing more that you can do? You've been faithful and you've prayed. Keep on praying and keep on being faithful. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. When we've done all that we know that we can do, the Word of God says in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5, For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high, thought that, uh, every high, and high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. The Lord spake the Paul in a vision by night. He said, Be not afraid, but speak, uh, but, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. Every day we have a choice of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We can wake up in the morning. We have two choices. We can go back to sleep and keep on dreaming. Or we can get up and we can choose to chase our dreams. I believe God likes those who chase the dream and stand and watch God bring it to fruition. Yeah. Amen. Stand still and see what God will do. 
Amen. Stand still when you've done all that you can do. I don't know what else I can do, Lord. I, I've done it all. I, I've witnessed to I don't know another word to speak. I pray to, to, to my knees. Hey, I've cried till there's no more tears in my eyes. I believe it's time to stand still and see the salvation of God. Sometimes there's nothing we can do but just wait upon the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What does that mean? Wait, it means a couple different things. It means, yes, sometimes it takes time. But it means to be entwined with God. Like pieces of thread are entwined. To create a strong rope. God is strengthening you as you wait upon Him. He is renewing you. He's giving the power to walk. Even the youth, they get weary and they faint. Amen. But God said they that wait upon the Lord would yeah. renew their strength. Wait upon God. Yeah. Amen. Wait upon God. Amen. Hebrews says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us, and run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for, what, for the joy was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of uh, the right hand of the throne of God. I have to tell you something tonight. The price of our victory is already won. It is won tonight. Amen. We can stand back and watch the salvation of God. God knew before the Egyptians, even uh, the, the, the Israelites even left Egypt, God knew that they were going to be in a bind. Amen. But God already had a plan devised and all the Israelites needed to do was stand still. Amen. Stand still. Yeah. And watch the salvation of God. Yeah. Amen. Stand still tonight and watch the salvation of God. Let Him be our guiding light in the middle of the darkest night. Amen. Sometimes I look at the book of, of, of Ruth and I look at Naomi and she goes out into the barley fields and she sees nothing. You know, she's she's barren, she's empty, she sees nothing at all. As she goes, uh, as, as she's there, she's feeling sorry for herself. She's there and she said, Don't call me Naomi anymore, but call me Mara because the Lord's dealt bitterly with me. I'm a bitter woman. But can I have you do something tonight with me? And we won't read it for the sake of time. But would every one of you turn to the book of Matthew? Turn to the book of Matthew, chapter number 1. Here it is. Naomi. And you know what? I would like to say to Naomi, Naomi, stand still and watch the salvation of God. And if she would say, call me Mara, I'd say, no, I'm going to call you Naomi. Stand still and watch the salvation of God. As you begin to read down through there, you'll find that from verse number 1 all the way down to verse number 17, it goes through those genealogies. How many of you sometimes when you're in your devotions just kind of wade through that? It sometimes is a lot to wade through. I'll admit, I'm there with you. Uh, but I noticed something in verse number 5. The Bible says that the Solomon begot Boaz of, uh, uh, of Rechab, and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth. And let's just stop right there. You know what I want to say? Stand still and see the salvation of God. Think sometimes we don't always see the big picture. Sometimes we don't always see the big plan. But I want to tell you, Naomi, that God is working and God is moving because we come on down to verse number 18 and the Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ, Amen. God's very own Son was on this wise when as His mother, Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together. Behold, Amen, the salvation of God. Stand still and see God's salvation. Yes, sometimes it seems like it's a great way off and sometimes we don't understand the big picture. But I'm telling you, God's plan is a plan of salvation. Naomi, God has a plan of salvation through your seed. God has a plan of what you're going through right now.
Yes, Amen. God has a plan tonight. He has a plan. It's a long story, but it was worth the wait. Amen. It doesn't look like God's plan may work, but it still works. Amen. In effect, I want you to know that in God's Word, He brings His plan to pass. Turn with me to one other place, and I'm just about done for the night. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Chapter number 41. Isaiah chapter number 41. I want to read several verses here. Isaiah 41, starting at verse number 10. The Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and all ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. I need to go back and read that again. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the, the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them away, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and the needy seek water and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make, thee the, make, make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the cedar tree, the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in, in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this, the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Stand still tonight. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Watch God make something that's greater with stronger teeth that will say into the mountain, be thou removed. It's going to eat it up. And to the hill, it's going to eat it up. And the wind's going to blow away. Stand still and watch God. When the poor and the needy, they seek water, they thirst, and there is no, no water, stand still. And watch God open up the fountain. Watch God make a way so that all may see and know and understand that it is God. Child of God tonight, you know what I say to you? Stand still and watch God. The burden that you've been bearing, the, the care that you've been carrying, the need that you have, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual, stand still. You may say, Brother Seville, I have done all that I can do. Well, now that you're at the end of this road and you're touching the hem of this garment, stand still. Stand still. Just trust. Wait upon the Lord. Know that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. No weapon that the enemy has formed against us will prosper. We don't have a need to fear because He's holding us. He's guiding us. 
He's speaking to us. He's taking the impossible and making it possible for us. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. What seems to be the impossibility tonight? What seems to be the thing that you've tried to fix or you've tried to correct it? You've exhausted all your measures. Stand still. Stand still. And watch God. Tonight, I don't think that I could say anything more to you than simply stand still. Wait upon the Lord and be of good courage. He said to Joshua, just the way that I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. You know what? I am His child. I have that same calling. You have that same calling. Just as He was with Moses, just as He was with Joshua, He's with you. And nothing can come against you. Because you are His child. But God, why did you allow those Egyptians to begin to take flight after the Israelites. Because God has a plan. And God's plan was for them to have the opportunity to stand still and seek God's salvation. God, why have you allowed this to happen in my life? Because God wants you to stand still and see the salvation of God. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. Amen. Let's just stand. Let's just wait and see what the Spirit of God will do for us as He reveals salvation. This is what I want us to do tonight. And then I want every one of us just to gather in. Amen. No fanfare, nothing fancy, just you and God. I want you to stand with God. And I want you to watch His salvation. I want you to wait upon Him. I want you to gain strength. I want you to be renewed. I want you to soar later. I want you to run and not be weary later. But right now, God just wants us to wait. Would you come tonight? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that you've been saying, I'm, I'm at the end of my resources. I, I'm, I'm at the end of everything that I can do. Amen tonight. Just come and stand. Just come and wait. Wait upon the Lord. Amen, Brother Justin, you can just play that same seated that was playing before church. Amen. Let's just wait on the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.